This is North. source for TV news. From the Grady College of the University of Georgia, this is Grady News Source. Good evening and welcome to 570 News. I'm Valentina Urego. And I'm Brian Marseille. A drummer from a band founded in Athens was on stage inside the Bataclan Theater in Paris when gunshots rang out. Julian Dorio survived, but very nearly close to losing his life. Reporter James Thompson is covering the story. If you've seen the horrific footage from inside the Bataclan Theater, you know what a shock it must have been for those inside. But one person inside, right there, on the stage, Julian Dorio, the drummer for the band. He's a UGA grad, and he's a member of an Athens band. Here's Julian Dorio doing what he does best. He helped found the band The Wigs while a student at the University of Georgia. While they are now based in Nashville, they perform in Athens often. In fact, they were supposed to play at the 40 Watt this month. In fact, it was supposed to be in November, but Julian got this great opportunity to play with um, the Eagles of Death Metal. Another band asked Julian to be their tour drummer on their overseas tour, so the concert was rescheduled for January 23rd. I was so excited for him to be able to, you know, play Europe and play in sold out venues. George Fontaine of New West Records is a friend of Julian's and helped sign the Wigs to the label several years ago. He says that this was Julian's first time touring with the Eagles of Death Metal. But what was a great opportunity turned into a nightmare. Julian was on stage Friday night at the Bataclan Theater in Paris when gunmen opened fire. Julian made it out safely and made it to a Paris police station unharmed. George was among many worried friends in Athens who were relieved to get the good news. We heard pretty early on after the attacks that um, he had made it out safe. Despite the scare, the show at the 40 Watt in January is expected to go on as planned. The, the door people and the sound people and management who love you know Julian very much just to have him safe and sound and, and to be able to see him and you know in the next couple months is going to be you know awesome. As you can see from the photo it's understandable that Julian is still recovering from the shock of the attacks. On a happier note the performance at the 40 watt in January will celebrate the band's four, uh, excuse me 10th anniversary together. Tickets to see the wigs at the 40 watt on January 23rd are on sale for $15. The attacks in Paris have not gone unnoticed or unmourned here in Athens. Christian and Muslim organizations at UGA held a prayer vigil Monday night. This was a chance for students to say what was on their minds and on their hearts. Amina Abbas grieved for the lives lost in Paris and showed her broken heart during the vigil. I saw the fear that everyone had and um, it reminded me of everything else that's happening around the world. It, I guess it woke me up. It woke me up to be more attentive. It woke me up to be more empathetic, to pay attention better. And I was really glad that we were all able to come here to this vigil and, and talk about it, hear other people's thoughts, 
pray for the victims, pray for a better world. That's all everyone ever wants. They just want peace. They want a better world. And that's, that's we accomplished that just a little bit here at this vigil tonight. Just a little bit. But, you know, a little bit can go a long way. As Amna said, a little can go a long way, and the Muslim Student Association, alongside peacemakers, felt this was a successful and meaningful prayer time. Although it's been seven years in America for Jonathan Balyu, he was deeply affected by the attacks in Paris. His family and friends live in the same neighborhoods that were targeted. Uh, they were these drops, really. Uh, it, they really felt like it could have been them basically. After communicating with his family through social media, Jonathan knew they were safe. Sadly, some of his friends that are professors could not say the same, as one of them even lost a student. Try to make sense of the events together, but uh, we didn't manage at all <laughs> to, uh, because the overcoming the grief was not uh, possible at this point. Uh, but. Um, it is hard for Jonathan to be far from home and far from his family, but he keeps a positive attitude considering the distance. Unfortunately, this does not shut down the fear he has for his family. And uh, I'm afraid for my family, of course, uh, uh, especially, um, you know, because the attacks were targeting my, uh, my part of my family that was living in that neighborhood. Uh, and uh, I want to, show my support to friends and family who live there as much as I can. Jonathan kept in constant communication with his friends and family and is glad they are safe. He said they are showing the resistance to the tragedy by continuing with life and supporting each other in good community. Coming up, we'll be discussing how students at the University of Georgia are supporting their Southeastern Conference counterparts at Mizzou. Get out to the forest. Let the kids connect to their roots. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah! Woohoo! Hey, guys, wait up! And discover the wonders of nature with your family. These trees are the key to our way of life. Fresh air. What a glorious morning! Clean water. Woohoo! This is great! An endless forest adventure. Let's rock this jungle! Yo, this is untapped territory. How amazing! <laughs> Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. How you doing? My name's Steve. My family's lived in this neighborhood for years. Recently, things got so tight, we had to go to our local food bank for help. I lost a lot of sleep worrying about what the neighbors might think. That is, until I saw them there, too. How'd I do, Steve? A little stiff. If you could have done a little what? better. What? Come on! You know, I have an Academy Award. Yeah, but not for playing me. Play a role in ending hunger. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank. All right, I know this isn't any fun to talk about, but we should. Okay, so who's gonna do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect, that's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And I'll try to get the generator going without any gas. Oh, let's not forget the cell phones, which probably won't work. Right. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. Well, I think we couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Some students are afraid similar conflict that happened at the University of Missouri could find its way to the University of Georgia. Reporter Jerron Matthews says that's because they say there are many similarities between the two campuses, but there's one big difference. And that one big difference, they say, is people here are listening. Brian, both campuses are almost identical in demographics, but the major difference is UGA is actually hearing their students. They believe the response from the school is important in preventing conflict. 
Unlike the protesters in Missouri, UGA had a successful rally that included over 15 leadership minority organizations as their way of supporting a nationwide movement called Word to Mizzou. We know how they feel, how it feels to be 7% on the campus. You know, uh, how it feels sometimes you feel alone on campus when there's not that many people who look like you. Students feel that Georgia is doing a great job in letting their voices be heard. But as a black student, I definitely feel like my voice and my opinions do matter more so than what I was seeing from the research that I've done in Mizzou. There are others who feel UGA could be a hotbed for racism. You can argue that it, like things haven't changed, period, or you can just argue that the, the system took a, took a different face. And, you know, over 40 years, like, you can completely revolutionize how you oppress a certain amount of people. Dean Charles Davis of Grady School of Journalism believes that immaturity is everywhere, but the response to it is what's important. I don't know if they're that much different from other campuses. There's always some knucklehead doing something stupid on just about every campus. The difference to me was in the response of the administration. They just weren't nearly as responsive. In reality, all the students did was stand on some steps and chant four words. But to the students present, it meant so much more. You know, a picture with a hashtag can do so much now in our generation. You know, we are the social media generation. So I, I just sowing that solidarity for one to tell Missouri students that you're not alone. We feel your pain. They say when you're one in a hundred, that no one should feel your pain. But on a campus of over 30,000, they say you should never feel alone. Live from the newsroom. Jerome Matthews, 570 News. You can join the Word to Mizzou movement by following the hashtag WeStandWithMizzou. Today's civil rights movement has no central face or group like those of the 1960s, and some activists say one isn't necessary. Local minority groups say they spread the same message as their predecessors, but in a different way. With a Snapchat, then a group me message, now a tweet. Like the Black Lives Matter movement, Martavia Spicer and other activists use social media apps to reach hundreds of their peers in seconds. And it's like we don't deal with the same problems they do they have in 1964 and 1965. So we kind of had to like revolutionize what, what civil rights actually looks like. Today's activists can mobilize faster than those 50 years ago ever could. Marty believes a faceless movement doesn't need a central group or voice to get their message across to a global audience. Back then, like Martin Luther King would have gotten a million retweets on whatever he said, and nobody else, like he would have gotten two or three like here or there. But now, nowadays, like every, anybody can be Martin Luther King. Others like Andrew Porter say while some knock the lack of immediate action, the value of sending a tweet or photo lies in the action itself. Like, we see you, we hear you. This is our little token. It's, it's, it's small. It may not change something. It may change something, but just to do something. I feel like doing something beats doing nothing every time. Simply typing on your computer can feel like nothing. But some activists say 140 characters today can mean as much as a 400-mile march did decades ago. We've heard a lot of the similarities between the Georgia and Missouri. Now we take a closer look at the numbers. Some schools have approximately 35,000 students, but what is more surprising is the almost identical black and white student populations with both hovering around 7 and 75 percent, respectively. Another interesting statistic is that although the University of Missouri admitted their first African-American students 12 years prior to UGA, Mizzou is having a much larger amount of racial tension. The University of Missouri is currently celebrating its 65th year as a desegregated institution. After the break, we'll tell you why UGA students and faculty are pushing for a certain center on campus. Terrifying. It's disgusting. And it must be stopped. Throughout downtown Athens, mindless zombies are throwing recyclable items in the trash. No! But you can be a hero. Use the downtown recycling bins for all your recyclable items. Cans, bottles, paper, and more can all be recycled. So use the downtown bins and don't be a mindless zombie. To save this world, we must recycle more. Hart, right, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. Okay, I get it. I'll do better. 
Just please, don't leave. Okay, but remember, if I go, you go. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I ride the bus. I ride the bus. Nosotros usamos el autobús. Athens Transit would like to remind you that the bus is for everyone. Riding the bus is safe, affordable, and convenient. For work, for shopping, or anything else, the bus can take you there. And when you need a little extra help, the bus is ready to meet your needs. So remember, the bus is for everyone. I ride the bus. For routes and complete information about the bus, visit AthensClarkCounty.com slash transit. Over 400 colleges have on-campus women's centers for students, faculty, and staff. UGA is not included in that 400. Reporter Jasmine Calhoun says many are wondering, why does UGA not have a women's center? Morgan, since there's been a need for a women's center since 2003. Now since then, there have been several demonstrations, protests, and petitions to bring one to UGA's campus. Now the question everybody's asking is, why is it not here? Students do not walk through the doors to a physical women's center at UGA. Instead, UGA's women's center is just a click away. Students or faculty search through this website to find UGA's women's resources. Jane Whitman, Secretary of Women's Studies Student Organization, appreciates the resources UGA provides so far, but the website does not provide the community like this. Center for all women to come together to talk about their, their daily lives, talk about their action plans for the future. The website combines all of UGA's resources into one virtual umbrella. Lance Griffin, a supporter of the Women's Center, says the website is good to have, but it doesn't create a common area for everyone to identify. It has been like a place to grow to within my own identities that don't really get a whole lot of attention on campus. So there are several resources for women, such as educational programs through women's studies, but the they are scattered larger throughout institute campus. For a safe space for women on campus, one that would be broad-based, uh, non-biased, and also one that creates a level of diversity and equity amongst all women on campus. Now Jane Darman, chairman of the Women's Initiative Committee, understands this frustration. Until a solution is reached, she encourages all students to take use of all the spaces available throughout campus. Jasmine Calhoun, Tele 5570. Thank you, Jasmine. Both Georgia Tech and Georgia College have women's centers. The director of the Georgia College's Women's Center says that it helps promote conversation about inequality and sexual violence. The Women's Center aims to inform visitors about the issues that women face today. After being informed, students and faculty can help organize ways to prevent these same issues from happening on their own campus while aiding victims who have been affected. Coordinator Jennifer Graham has been at the center from the beginning. When our Women's Center started 10 years ago, um, there weren't really any kind of conversations about violence prevention. There weren't any kind of conversations about providing services, advocacy services to, to our students on campus. Uh, there weren't conversations about having lactation spaces for folks or for, um, you know, we have a series called Start Smart where we're talking about pay equity in the workplace and, and negotiating for your salary and those kinds of things. Those kind of conversations weren't happening. Um, and so, you know, 10 years has gone by since the Women's Center was started and, and those conversations happen a lot more. Resource centers on UGA's campus, such as the LGBT Center, have their own perceptions as to what a physical space means to their organization. LGBT Resource Center's Senior Coordinator Josh Fletcher feels that when the LGBT Resource Center was created, it was a much more controversial time for his community. He felt like the space was then a safe escape while the rest of campus was not. But to him, it is more than just about having somewhere to meet up. They are more than that. Um, you know, we understand that learning happens outside of the classroom, and so learning can happen in this dialogue right now. Learning happens 
um, in student organizations, and then just meeting people who are different than you, right, and like you, um, having that, you know, ability to, to cross kind of dialogue um, with one another. Our actual physical space has, like I said, our library, um, our DVD collection. We do have programs that are actually in this space, so we host, um, you know, different student organizations have meetings in here, um, our uh, Globes, our faculty and staff LGBT group here on campus, they um, come here and use our, utilize our space to have their meetings. Um, and so education is happening here, not just lounging around in between. While Fletcher doesn't think a women's resource center at UGA would be necessary, he understands why having a physical space for groups is important for further understanding and education. When we get back, we'll tell you about a new program coming to UGA that allows special needs students to get a college experience. Welcome to the athens Clark County Tennis Center in Athens, Georgia. Completed in 2013, the Tennis Center offers great play all year round on 12 fully lit hard surface courts. There are accommodations for spectators and enough space to host a tournament. The main building features energy efficient construction, ADA accessibility, a covered pavilion, and much more. Players of all ages enjoy open play, clinics, and summer tennis camps at the athens Clark County Tennis Center. Because in Athens, Georgia, tennis is for everyone. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. This is the Oconee Street Park and Ride Lot, where you can park for free on weekdays and ride the bus into downtown Athens and UGA. The Downtown Express runs every 20 minutes during peak commuting hours, so skip the parking fees and traffic hassles. Park for free and ride into downtown Athens and UGA from the Oconee Street Park and Ride. Park and Ride. Park, park and Ride. Uh -huh. Park and Ride. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Ooh. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. A new group of students will be admitted into UGA starting in 2017, and we're not talking about your typical admits. For the first time, students with disabilities will have the opportunity to take courses and obtain a certificate. Reporter Emily McClanahan took a deeper look into student government's new initiative, Destination Dogs. Emily, what exactly is this program? Destination Dogs gets its unique name because the courses offered will implement life skills and help transition these students into adulthood. It will be an opportunity for the students to showcase their special talents and abilities to, and use them to one day get a job. While still in development, Destination Dogs will start small with a cohort of five students in spring 2017. Junior Darby Miller, student government treasurer, helped initiate the program and says the campus is ready for a program such as this. Students just get really excited for this initiative and for this program. I think unlike a lot of other schools, our campus culture is right behind this and really excited to see UGA grow. While Extra Special People is another local organization that helps students with special needs in the community, Miller is most excited for these students to experience all elements of inclusion. Seeing the social skills you learn from college and the things you get to grow is something that these students have lacked and don't have the opportunity. So now that they have this opportunity, like let them join clubs and organizations, let them be a part of Greek life, let them go to the dining halls, let them sit next to you in class. Sandy Adams is a current board director for the Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Services. She pushed hard for the program at Kennesaw State and she is hopeful for more inclusion in the future. I use one example of Helen Keller who couldn't hear, see, or talk and she accomplished quite a, a, a bit and it was because of some opportunities that she had. She believes the role of students will be crucial for the future of these students with special abilities. You guys will, will become the CEOs who hire them someday 
and, and the more opportunity that you have to be around them and to appreciate them and to value them and um, see what they can do. Destination Dogs couldn't come at a better time since the Americans for Disabilities Act just had its 25th anniversary. The act prohibits discrimination based on disabilities and Destination Dogs is certain to take inclusion to the next level. I'm Emily McClanahan, live from the newsroom, 570 News. Thank you, Emily. There are around 200 colleges in the nation with these post-secondary programs for students with disabilities. UGA will be the fifth college to implement a program of this kind in Georgia. Aside from providing a college experience, the program will also address the stigma surrounding special education. High unemployment rates among the disabled led Clemson to create a program in 2008 that allowed special needs students to graduate. They graduated with a college certificate. Destination Dogs will be moder model modeled after Clemson Life a program that emphasizes independent living and allows participants who are over 18 to study and work in a college setting. The Clemson program offers a two-year track, whereas UGA requires five semesters. Clemson Life has about five students in each cohort and emphasizes life skills and internship opportunities. Destination Dogs will focus on trying to provide a college experience to special needs students. Coming up next, we will give you a wrap-up of all of today's stories. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. Foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. That ember can ignite and destroy your home or community. You can't control where that ember will land. Only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how you can help protect your community from wildfires. Let's take a look at our stories tonight. Starting with our, to our top story, the terroristic attacks took place this past weekend were an absolute tragedy and affected a great amount of lives, not only in Paris, but here in the States as well. Drummer Julian Dorio of local Athens band, The Wigs, was actually present during the shootings of the Bataclan Theater and was able to make it out safely. Tonight we heard from the students supporting the University of Missouri protesters and others who feel UGA could be in for a similar future. We also compared the strikingly similar demographics of both schools. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the post show critique and follow us on website and Twitter at 570. Thank you. Good night. Oh, where were we supposed to do that? Grady News Source is a student production of the Grady College of Journalism and Mass Communication at the University of Georgia, which is solely responsible for its contents. Views expressed do not represent those of the administration nor the Board of Regents at the University System of Georgia. If you want to be a parent, 
It doesn't matter how you play. What you wear. How you dance. Or even what direction life takes you. You just need to be there. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. You guys going to my party on Friday? Yeah, dude. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> All right. What's up, dude? I'm loving your jacket. <laughs> don't be such a fag. If you don't mean it, why say it? Words hurt. Think before you speak. I come from a big family. I'm the oldest of six. To me, being the first person to go to college, it's like setting a standard, you know? My little brother is eight years old now. I challenge his curiosity. I challenge him to dream. I have to paint a picture for him that he can look up to and live up to and possibly be better than. My name is Jacquez. And I am your dividend. Driving down Oconee Street in Athens, you might get a glimpse of this in your rear view mirror. This red building is famously known as the REM steeple and sits right behind Nucci space. It used to be a part of St. Mary's Episcopal Church, but in 1990, the church was torn down, leaving the steeple to stand alone. My personal connection to it is that it's music related and, and uh, and, uh, and that's what I've chosen to do with my life. All right, hello, welcome to the mock show post show. I'm Dylan Richards, I was a senior production manager today. So we'll start off with Michael Castanguera, executive producer. Uh, what did you think of today's show? There's a lot of good things to say about the show. Um, as some of you saw, I got a little apoplectic, my big word of the day, just to prove I do have a college degree. Um, over a couple of things, main things being length and time, and we're going to go over those in a little more detail. Um, readers that run 40 seconds just ain't going to happen. Sound bites where somebody it's just a sound bite and it's 20 and 30 seconds ain't going to happen. You know, people tune you out. I tuned out, quite frankly, on a couple of them. We did a vote slot, and I'm sitting there going, out, out. Nobody's paying attention anymore. You're losing it. You've got to tighten these things up. We've got a lot of still mechanical things I want to go over a bit um, that we shouldn't be having at this point. However, I'm, my biggest issue is always going to be content, and you're getting there, and you're hitting it. We've got to get you a little more focused still, but you're hitting something. I mean, you had a couple of stories there that I'm going great. As you guys heard, I already said to one, I'm thinking, you know what? We're going to come back. We've done about two or three this time um, and said stories in mock show. We're moving over to news source because I want them to get wider distribution. We're going to do that with one. We've got about two others we've done it through. And a couple of the ones you did today, quite frankly, are borderline in that regard. There are a couple of things I'm sitting there going, this is good. This is what I want to see. Mm, really, the other issue is it doesn't matter a damn what casting gear wants to see. It matters what the viewer wants to see, okay? And that's where I'm trying to get us to. And we're getting there. Um, take a look at the stuff. We'll talk about a little bit more detail. Um, but I'm going to start by turning over to the producer, who I think um, went through about six of her seven lives. Introduce yourself, by the way. Maybe another thing we could work on is communication. 
and then we add it in and we mm, figure it all out properly, the terrible part is you're screwing the rest of the guys, you know? And unfortunately, that's what we ended up happening. We ended up kill, killing a crap load of stories, and I was trying my best to save them, but we couldn't save them. And then we had to do a tap dance at the end, and you don't want to do that. You know? We've got to bring them tighter, 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 okay? And, like, like one, one more, more thing, thing like, like if... I don't, I don't care, care if y'all change, change like, like your story layouts, I guess, like from a Vosot to Angler package a million and one times, but every time you do change it, please tell me, like, please don't force for me to ask you every 10 minutes, like, is this still the same thing? Because I think a lot of things ended up getting switched up and I just wasn't aware, and that also felt to me I should have made one last check, but I thought I kind of did, and then, yeah, some stuff got rearranged. But um, overall, I thought it was really good. I mean, I feel okay about it, so... Could you whisper more? Um, I feel okay about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we have a guest, so to speak. Um, why don't you introduce yourself? And you can grab that mic there. I think it should be good. Yeah. Can you have mine? Um, hi, guys. I'm Sierra Grady. I was a new sourcer last semester. We named the college after her, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've heard the jokes. My name's on the door. Just kidding. But um, I actually thought it was a really good show. I was really impressed with you guys. Um, the only things I noticed with, well, first of all, the Paris story, that was your story. I really, really liked the story. The only thing that I saw was when we came back to you and you pointed to the picture on the screen and you were like, you can still tell he's suffering. And I couldn't tell that he was still suffering. That's the only mm -hmm. thing that I mm -hmm. saw, but I thought it was a really great story. I think I threw you a curveball because yeah, I told you, yeah, reference the screen. Sure you the yeah, because. Like, right, well, let's throw out this remote I have left. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was just the only thing, because I was, like, looking at the picture, I was like, well, he's suffering? How? I can't tell. Yeah. Um, but that, that was a really great story. Um, other things were just minor, like, don't be afraid to get your frames in tighter on your people that are giving you sound mm. bites. Um, also, make sure it's eye level, so we're not, like, looking up at them or looking down on them. Um, don't be afraid to get tight on their face, and make sure you have, like, the rule of thirds in, and if they're looking this way, have the room on this side of the screen kind of thing. Um, just like minor things, but I mean, I thought the stories were all really good, and really well put together. Um, just like the minor hmm. editing things and setting up your shots right and stuff like that. Cool. All right. Why don't we do this? We're going to go around the room, talk about the packages. So, um, oh, technical. Sorry. Yes. Excuse me. Because our senior production manager wandered off, I forgot. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm Connor Riley. I was your director today. Um, I thought you guys did a really good job. Um, we came in at 6. You did a meeting at 6. I think that may have been the first time all semester, so you guys are getting better. Well, it was 6.03, but that's near enough. That's close, that's, <laughs> that's close enough for me. Uh, this was my first time directing uh, since, like, April. Um, so, and it was great that you guys had all your stuff in. You made my job a lot easier in terms of switching stuff. Um, James, I'm not picking on you because you've never done this before, but this is going to be huge next semester because our, class, our new source class right now is having a huge problem with it. Dropping graphics and OTSs, there's a proper way to do it. So I'm telling you this now so that when I yell at you in the spring, I can reference back to this. Please make sure that you drop OTSs and graphics that are going to be in boxes, whether it be like in that monitor or in the monitor behind you when you're an anchor, the proper way. You don't know how to do it. I'm just I'm reminding you guys now. There's a right way to do it. And it's really frustrating. Um, Actually, why don't you do me a favor, send me a note about it, and I'll yeah, pass yeah. it on to the The right way to do it is you more or less, you, you, so you grab your image, you have your image, you take that, you throw it into um, Premiere. You take a second image, you take that same image, lay it over the top or underneath it, depending on which one, and you, you blow it up and then blur out the sides. That way, instead of seeing, yeah. Your picture, and you'll see it in documentaries or in certain things, they'll, they'll put pictures that aren't the right size and just do black. But for news, if you watch the news, they'll either put things that are the wrong size. But we're talking about over a different colored background, like our, our graphics package, or what he was saying, what I showed you all, the Gaussian blur. So when you had that picture up there, that actually didn't bother me as much because it was on the monitor. But in general, and, and it would have been better. It just wasn't horrible. Yeah, you just want to make sure it's there the right size. 
16 by 9. Yeah. Also, again, like Casting Garrett said, times. Um, if you're ever doing sports next semester, you'll learn how frustrating this is when your your, your classmates don't get times right. Every single time, sports will be the first time, first thing killed. Last week when I was sports, I think I had like four or five different stories killed, and that really sucks. Um, on that, I thought you guys did really well. I thought this was a really good show. I was here last Thursday. You guys are definitely getting better and better as the semester goes on. Uh, just like little things, like going back last second, making sure like all the audio works. Yeah. Um, but that, Before you drop, it's a good rule. Yeah. Listen At least to try to it. watch it once. Go through it and I know when you're once. pressing it, you're sitting there, you know, you're about to crap a brick and say, I just got to drop it, and Casting Gears just screamed at me. But I'm sorry, the two minutes you take to listen to it's going to make a big difference, and we'll catch these. Because we had a lot of audio problems. I mean, not severe, but enough of dead air that mm, we don't want to see that. And then, yeah, and then two last little things. Thank, Thank you guys, guys for making, making the show really easy. easy. Dylan and I had a really, really stressful news source show today that was just beyond insane. Um, to save you, like, everything went wrong that could have gone wrong, and we ended up fixing it a little bit, but not enough. Um, and then last thing, happy birthday to Natalie. It's her birthday today. Um, so, yeah, good job, guys. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Could we hit it in the key of C? Aww. <laughs> My only technical note was when you're editing your packages, if you're going from your track to a sock, and you're going to be talking over that person, a lot of y'all either had that person mm -hmm. talking at the same level that they're going to talk, and now they're doing their SOT under what you're saying, or y'all muted it and then forgot to unmute the rest of your SOT. Does that make sense yeah. what I'm saying? Like you had your track over something. What you can do is have your track go into the beginning of what they're saying, and I don't know if y'all know how to do this, but go in and keyframe your audio so it's lower while you're talking and then comes back up full. So y'all don't have to cut your track and then mute the first part, and it's not as jarring. Does that make sense? So just keyframe your audio and then have it come up when you're done talking. Because um, we couldn't hear like half the thoughts because they would be really, really loud while you were talking. We would lose your track or they'd be quiet and you would keep them quiet the whole time. But other than that, it was a pretty good show. Okay, cool. Let's go around. Um, we'll start. Um, James, Paris B B Band, come on up. And the standard routine is what did you like? What would you do different? And I know one of the things you would do different. Right, yeah. Is the first thing the I would audio. do differently is, is fix the audio for sure. Um, and so I had a script written earlier um, in, in the day, and Castiguera told me it was okay and then didn't say anything else, which concerned me. Um, and so eventually I asked him you know, what I could do to make it better, which uh, turned out okay, but it almost made us drop it too late. Um, but anyway, we got it dropped, so you know, in theory it would have been better to drop it a little earlier. Um, there were a couple spots where I need to go back and get a little bit better B-roll. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was probably the sound, and then a couple instances of subpar B-roll were probably the, the big things that I noticed. Yeah. Um, the, the group that you had performing, I mean, good Lord, are they 1960s or what? I mean, uh, I think they I mean, that last time I... I think they dressed up like they're from the 70s. You're getting your decades Seven, missed I up, man. I that's, know. Well, you know. That's the 70s. That's about the time I sobered up probably uh, in the 70s. <laughs> I was about to say, anyone here, you should know the Thank difference you. between the 60s and the 70s. Yeah, well, I should, but I, I'm i losing it. <laughs> no, and, and I, I did think it was a good, a good piece. The um, I will give you credit for one thing. When I started to ream you a new orifice, um, you took it. It's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Um, I will never be satisfied with somebody saying, well, you know, I didn't for this reason or that reason. You know, one of the uncomfortable things we do as journalists sometimes, we go after stories that I'm not comfortable with, you know? I don't want to talk to that person who's just lost their kid. Or well, I don't want to go to that person that's suffering. I'm going to find ways around it, but I'm going after the story. And you've got to go after it right. no matter what. And, you know, if I get turned down, I peel higher. You know, publicist doesn't like me, fine, I'm going to the manager. Manager doesn't like me, I'm going to the damn owner of the company. I'm going to keep going up. Because you've got to, okay? Um, and that was the only thing I got a little snippy about. Um, yeah, and I, at first I don't think I adequately expressed that I had actually tried a few different avenues and then I tried again, but anyway. Go for it, you gotta yeah. push it. Um, yeah, let's get the video and then the other thing is, you know, uh, thinking of the visuals, the visuals, because quite frankly, that was one of the last minute curves I threw you was, I mean, I saw those pictures of those guys playing and it's like, that's what the heck I wanted to see. and. That brought it home as soon as you said, there's the guy, he's from Athens, and that's the guy sitting there in Paris while there's gunfire around them. That drove it home. And that's where I want to work on a little bit more and then make it a little clearer, okay? Cool. 
Cool. All right. Um, Miss Urego actually is next because she had two packages. I thought I was next. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to hog the limelight as always. Yeah. You had an anchor package and, and then you had the uh, talking one. So I'm Valentina Urego. Um, I was nervous about this, but I really felt like a journalist today because I had something I thought was cool, and I am still learning. Like, I am still learning. I'm still a student. But I fought for something that I believed in. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if you liked it. Basically, casting, it was like a 45-second thought, and I put B-roll over it, but it was so good. It was so good. She was crying, and it was so compelling. And it wasn't... It's okay. It wasn't just because she was crying. It was everything that she said. It was how effective she was by it that I was like, this is what matters. This is what I want people to see. This is what's going to like, reach people's hearts. And um, Castingera didn't even listen to it. And he's like, no, no, no. And I was like, please. So we negotiated. And he said that if I did it and he didn't like it, I would get a D. So I did it anyway. I took a risk. Um, and I really liked it. Um, did any of you watch it? Yeah, what it really hurt is the audio didn't come through virtually at all. And that, that yeah, when you get a comment, grab a microphone. Um, yeah, and that is unfortunate. Um, I'm not sure it did work, okay, to be honest with you. It's, those are hard to pull off. Um, yeah, but the biggest thing is, and I've said this, and, you know, teachers can be jackasses, I know, and professors in particular. And I can be as big a one as anybody, and you guys know that. But I have no question or no problem with you challenging me. You challenge me in the right way, and you sit there and say, I want you to think this through. I believe in this. If I believe in it, you believe in it strongly enough, you're damn right. You come back. Okay? And she did. Okay? And I give you credit for that. And no, it's not going to be a D to that. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, give, I give you the credit, for though, for going for it. You know? I'm not sure it worked entirely, um, but mainly because of bad audio. And that's unfortunate. I had her mic on, but there's so many people around talking. I know it was bad. Yeah, but it's, and, and if the audio is going to carry it, you've got to be real careful with it. Yeah. I would real. Huh? Did she have just subtitles on the audio? I didn't know there was a thing. We could have, but I think that would have kind of even made it worse, actually. You know, because, I mean, I theoretically, it was, the, it was how she did it as well as what she said that was doing it, you know? Yeah. I would actually strongly encourage you and anybody else in the class to listen to it again and see it. You should post it on the website, okay? That's almost like an ASAP. And you guys should be posting all your packages on the website. We've said that one in particular. And I'd like to get some feedback and have you all look at it and see what you think about it, okay? Because that is important. But again, the issue is you go for it and you say, all right, let me do this. Let me, fine, you know? I do want to say I'm still shaking. <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> but I felt like a reporter. I felt like a journalist. I felt like I did my best. So it felt good. Good. Even though it didn't work. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. Unfortunate because of the audio. Yeah. Um, but the issue is, yes. I'm the glad idea was there. Yep. And I'm glad you did it. Cool. All right. Now, you're on. Good evening, I'm John Matthews. I was the reporter. And I'm just want to say, hey, we, we did it. I want to congratulate the team. Oh, am I, am I here now? You know that audio thing we've talked about? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think we did it. I feel like I'm rapping. And um, I'm, I'm, re I'm actually really proud of our team. We, we hit a moment where we didn't know what was going to happen. And... Uh, and, and we made it. I think we made it happen, Cassandra. Yeah, you guys had some technical issues, and, and some of them not technical. I mean, be, being very blunt, you misplaced a uh, jump drive or, yeah, yeah okay. Um, folks, I mean, that's pretty basic at this point. That stuff will kill you in the future, okay? 
Uh, but I do give you credit that all three of you pitched together and said some way, shape, or form we're going to retrieve it. It was a little shaky. There were some issues in it um, because of that probably. Um, but the fact is you did salvage it. And that's more important than anything else, you know. I don't care what you do, but at a point, seriously, when you get into the so-called real world, they don't want to hear excuses. You got a minute 30 package, it better be there. Either that or you've got to be walking on stumps because somebody chopped off your legs because you couldn't walk over to get it done. I mean, there better be a damn good reason for it, okay? And, people and, get and jumping off the, the chopping off the legs. Um, I just want to say, like for real, because I went to Cassian Garrow and he said, let me see your script. And then the team was like, no, we got it. We're going to finesse, finagle, and figure it out. And that's exactly what we did. And we put a time in a minute 35, and it was a minute 35. And and you smiled at me, so. <laughs> oh, I thought Valentina did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I like the comparison, by the way. That's good. I, the only question I had, it's almost you reference that at the front end. I might have used that in your um, remote end because the, literally when you put the numbers up, I mean, there are about three or four people in the booth saying, damn, yeah. boy, that really is. I mean, those were so dramatic, and that was what caught my attention. And after the fact, it was less impressive. But when you did that intro and you said, guess what? Number one thing, you know, there's differences. Number one, people here actually listen to you. Number two, though, it's amazing how similar they are. I mean, when you started showing those figures, it was like, damn, 75, 77, 7, and 7. Mm -hmm. It's like this is a copycat of Missouri, and, and Missouri is not quite southern, but pretty damn close to a southern school. And so there are so many parallels that that's the only major change in terms of formatting. And quite frankly, I'll take some of the blame for that because I semi-knew it, and I didn't push you to put it in because we did so many rewrites. Mm -hmm. But that would have, I think, made it a little bit better. Cool. All right, Jasmine. What are you doing? You got a small kidney or something, or what? All right, so I'm Jasmine Calhoun. I did the package concerning the Women's Health Center. And what killed me on that package was the audio. Mm. For some reason, I don't know what we were doing, but every time I tried to lay a track, um, I would take off my SD card because I like to be very organized. It's having extras in the computer, like, frustrates me. I tried to take it out, and all of a sudden, it turned red. So I was having to come back here, redo my audio several times, and then transfer it back. And then it finally just got to a point where I just used a flash drive to make it happen and just imported the whole the Shumway way. Does that make sense? So once I did that, instead of trying to cheat code it, and just drag and drop it. Because the shum way is, isn't it? You're just supposed to drag it into the desktop. No, right? you drag it from wherever source, then you put it on your G drive, and from your G drive, you import okay. it. So I was just taking it from the source that I was using it and just dragging it over. So okay. as soon as I took that source out of the computer, it was just like, well, we can't find the media anymore. And I had to keep redoing that and keep redoing that. And then one of the instances, it actually replaced one of my audios, and I had to come in here like at 6 30 to redo that whole entire audio. So it was just really crunch time. Mm -hmm. But, um. Yeah, and the editing, of, and as a result, that's why it, a couple of times the director was going to jump out because we were on like two and three seconds of dead air. Mm -hmm. I mean, between your track and the sound bites, and it was like, and that's too bad. It really hurt a lot on right. that one. Um, because your tune out factor, unfortunately, I would strongly suggest re editing and then posting that. I mean, mm -hmm. all the elements are there, but the technicals killed you. That was a big struggle. It's one of those instances where I wish I had just placed in instead of dropping it at 6.45, dropped it at 6.47, and actually looked over it again. And it probably would have caught all of that stuff, especially since I was C-block. Yeah, I had time to redo that. Yeah. Well, you got to get them dropped before the 7 o'clock newscast, but you still could yeah. have. Okay. Cool. Um, minor detail. I yelled at the anchor. Vosat, Vosat, you don't record VOs. You do VO live from the studio. Somehow she said, I told you to go ahead and do that. Vo the v you, you recorded your VOSOTs. Don't do that. <laughs> Morgan, it's almost the last week in semester. We've said, don't do that. You know, come on. You're supposed to do it from the studio. Because um, your danger of hitting that wrong gets even more because it's, 
And there's also, for the viewer at home, there's a dramatic difference between what I hear when you're in the studio and then what I hear you on recording. And, and in that case, they were also writing that audio all over the place for that. And sound bites, folks, I've said it, and I'm going to pick on poor Morgan again. I'm sorry, after about 15, 20 seconds, the viewers tune out, um, and I don't care what the hell it is. Um, very rarely it can hold. you got to tighten up these things. I know you're trying to be fair to the people and give full, but not to that extent. Um, destination dogs. This McClanahan. Hello, my name is Emily McClanahan. Um, we did the destination dog story, which I was really proud of, and um, I wanted to take a different angle in the package that, other than what we've kind of read um, online about it, because you know they're giving us the facts of when it's going to start and what the goal is and where the money's coming from, and that's great and all, but I didn't really care about that in terms of the package, and I wanted to talk more about the idea of like inclusion and kind of how. A, why it's important, and B, like how we as students can do that. Um, and I, I got some really good interviews. I actually <laughs> um, interviewed a lady who is on the board, like vocational board, who helped start this at all, and she started in Kennesaw. But anyway, um, I had some really good thoughts, and the only thing I really feel like where I just was B-roll, and I don't know why it worked out like that. Um, I guess, like, when I'm interviewing personally, when I'm interviewing people, I just forget to get these, like, B-roll shots of them. Um, because, for one, I feel like they're ready for me to go, and I'm just, I, you know, I don't know. Um, so I'm really disappointed in myself just for that and not really trying to think, like, outside of the box in terms of of what else I could get. But anyway, I thought it was a good story. I thought it was a good package. I thought everything other than the B-roll worked out great. I really have no comments. Um, I think our team did really good this week. We had a sick um, anchor and our producer jumped in to be anchor um, on her birthday. And uh, I just think it worked out good for D-Block. Yeah, the issue is the B-roll and we keep having that problem. Then the other issue is it took a couple of conversations before we got this refined. It was sort of there, but it took a while to figure out is though people who are intellectually uh, and mentally challenged in some way, shape, or form, and that was the new addition. But it took three conversations before I finally got that weaseled out of you, mm. okay? You've got to know these stories 100% in order to get the 10% of it right, so it's really critical, you know? Know the story inside out. And again, we talk about this communication to each other. You guys are talking about your good teams, but I'm still not seeing as much communication as I would think. I'm seeing some, and it's getting there, but it's got to get further, okay? Let's do a quick round robin with the anchors then. What I would do is let's just go around. Um, we semi-talked to Valentina so we can skip her. Brian? Um, yeah, why not? Yeah. You just want to show you're taller than me, that's all. <laughs> don't, make, don't, don't, don't make fun of the professor. <laughs> yeah, I get a D. <laughs> All right, so uh, our package went really smooth. Like Gerard said, we had a little stuff you got to finesse, but we got it done. Um, I will say Small Tree came through in the clutch for me today. I needed some B-roll shots of people on their phones. And if you ever feel like you need something generic, like you know people walking on campus, somebody using their phone, make sure to hit up Small Tree. And that, that's, that's, it, really, it really helped me start the package because I couldn't just start my package with like, 20 seconds of them just hanging out. My other B-roll was on that drive that disappeared. So, yeah, just, you know, sometimes small tree saves a day. That's yeah. all I got to say. Um, and it is true about the small tree. Um, when you're anchoring, uh, it's good to do some pauses. Don't be quite so dramatic in them. Okay. You know, it was like, and here's my next story, <laughs> okay? You know, a little bit of a pause between them does make sense, but, let, you know, be careful about mm, making it through them. All right. Morgan. Um, yeah, I think our package is good. Work on a couple things, shorten bow sauce. Um, that's. And also, I meant to say to this to you too. Talk in terms of the anchoring and the experience of anchoring and things that you learn, things that you would do different, or any advice you do as well. Well, it was my first time, so I didn't know you weren't supposed to do bow sauce like that. So, thought it was that. Um, it was fine. Dresses stink for having to put mics, so. 
that's all I've really got for today. All right. Um, yes, producer, I was about to say Ariel, but it's not. All right, so I stepped in to be anchor because one of our people got sick, so, um, but it didn't really matter because our like block got basically killed. So that was really frustrating. Yes, it is. Um, and so. this is where you have a right to express the frustration to your fellow uh, classmates because unfortunately they're the ones that end up doing that to you. The unfortunate thing is that last block's the one that gets butchered, you know? And quite frankly, I was gonna butcher the E block even more, but there was only so much I could do before we were going commercial to commercial and I couldn't do that. So that becomes an issue, yes. So yeah, that was just frustrating, um, but I know that's like a, whatever's a mistake, no one went for it to happen, but it's just annoying because you work on something all day and then it doesn't matter. So yeah, pretty much just that. Okay, producer, final words? That's you. Uh, <laughs> thank y'all, y'all did great, that's all I had. Okay, and uh, you, Connor? 30 seconds. Anything from you? Um, no, I thought it was good. Um, you guys have next week off, so don't celebrate because you're gonna come back Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving and, and nothing's, nothing's gonna, gonna be, be good, good to go. go. So, so just, just stay on top of your stuff over, over Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving break. break. And we've still got 15 more seconds. Any more thoughts, Castingara? No, the communication, you guys talk about it, and you talked about it. You got to yeah. communicate, communicate. I keep saying you can't over-communicate. I got to hear more because I'm, when we're having those discussions in the meeting, I'm still sitting there going, all right. Thank you for watching this. Mark Show 570. Cool.